Hey, my name is uh, Darren. I'm here with Miguel. Uh, we're both a part of our accounts team over at TransFX. And uh, what we wanted to do for you is just uh, record a quick five to 10 minute high level overview of our TransFX file approach. So I'll go ahead and let uh, Miguel take over from here. Great, thanks Darren. This is gonna be um, a very abbreviated demo. So if you have any questions, maybe features you expected to see or that you are curious as to if we have, let us know. So I'm gonna show you two different uh, perspectives of TransFX. One is where administrators work, um, and that's this UI we're looking at now, um, and where project maintainers configure settings for projects. The other side is gonna be where reviewers and translators work um, uh, for the languages they've been assigned. So uh, we're looking at our all projects dashboard, which is our localization activity for all projects in aggregate, and then also the progress by language to be able to keep a pulse on whether or not you're meeting uh, certain timelines. Uh, we also have um, that same dashboard for individual projects. Um, and uh, this is actually our, our real life TransFX uh, localization account that um, our translators and our localization team work within. Um, every project has its own um, use case. Uh, so some of these projects last for, you know, for example, our TransFX web application project has been going on for 11 years since the inception of TransFX. Some of these have only been around for a year or two. Some of these are just tests uh, to test out certain functionality. Um, but if we look at uh, our TransFX web application project, um, we can see that you know, we have, um, for example, translation memory fill up um, used. Uh, we have that enabled. And by and large, all of our clients use this. Um, this is the ability to um, uh, basically automatically fill in a, an identical translation that's been done in the past. Um, so that you're not uh, wasting time and redundantly translating or um, in spending more dollars because um, these agencies charge by the word, right? Uh, machine translation can also be leveraged. Um, for this project, we do not use machine translation, but for some of our projects, we do. Um, this, uh, this is really the, importance, the, the important part of the workflow that I wanted to show in this abbreviated demo. Um, in setting up your team by project, there's a, a slew of different uh, permissive roles. A user can have multiple permissive roles. So you can delegate responsibility very flexibly in TransFX. Um, every project also has its own files that it's translating. We only have two files um, in, in the TransFX uh, project for a web application. However, in some of our projects, we might have um, you know, one file only, or we might have you know, over 100 files. There's no limit on how many resources or files. Um, that you can uh, localize in a project. Um, so let's actually leave this perspective where the administrators and project maintainers work, and let's let's go into the part of the UI where the translators and reviewers work. Um, this it's important to mention because some of our, our clients are very particular about um, security and confidentiality. A, a translator and a translator and reviewer can only see what they've been assigned, so they can't see any other projects. Um, they can't see anything they haven't been assigned. This part of the UI is where they'll log in, is we um, broke up into three different panes or windows. Um, this left-hand side is um, where our strings are parsed, that the TransFX parser automatically parses from whatever file type's coming in. Uh, it, it, and on that note, the file type will leave the same way it came in. So after it's translated, after this file's translated, it will leave as whatever, if it was a JSON or a PO file, what have you. It'll leave the same way it came in. Center window is where we do our translations either manually or via machine translation or translation memory. Um, and this right-hand pane is where we can use um, helpful tools uh, to speed up or make our uh, translation process more efficient. Um, so if I give you an example here, um, and sorry, actually, let me quickly highlight that you can filter all these strings as well by certain variables, such as, you know, if a string's high priority, it needs to be a, a button on the web application needs to be translated right away. Um, uh, you know, you can look up your high priority strings and make sure that those are done before anything else is, for example. Um, an important tool to take a look at is translation memory. So um, we looked at our autofill. Um, so when there's a 100% match, yes, it's autofilled into the, the um, translation window. However, there's not always going to be 100% match. So we, we also track 60% or greater a match for any, um, any string. Here we see we have a 93% match as well. So we could click this use this button. If there was not a 100% match, we could start from 
at least um, a partial memory match. Uh, another tool that's used often um, is our glossary term list. Um, and uh, here we actually see a warning uh, that has been issued because the glossary term in this case um, wasn't used. And that it's an important tool in quality assurance in the process because there are some brand specific or industry specific um, terms that your translation team is gonna wanna make sure um, are controlled. In this case, for our team, uh, we've had issues with translating progress. So we put this in our glossary term list. Um, it defines this translation to be progresso. It cannot be deviated from. If it's deviated from, then a warning will be issued. This can also be set up as an error that will disallow even a save button to be clicked by a translator. In this case, we see that uh, progresso was not used um, in the Portugal locale of Portuguese, so a warning's been issued. Um, another tool to highlight is our issues um, or comments box. And this is where you can add an issue or comment, um, which um, prompts an email notification to the management team of this project. Um, and that also, um, not only email, but also through Slack, if you have Slack, we have an integration built out with Slack that will uh, send that as a notification as well. Um, to mention that, we also have reports and files um, as well as announcements that also integrate with Slack. Um, another tool to look at for quality assurance is our screenshot tool. Um, we have a couple of different um, visual context tools. Um, I just wanna highlight this one today in, in respect of time. So uh, username uh, here highlighted in green is, uh, is the, the word that we are highlighting here that our, uh, we wanna provide our context for, for our translation reviewers. They can see where it is in the UI. They can see where they're translating it um, to keep consistent with the UI in case in a, lot of, in a lot of cases there are multiple translations for the same string. So one might fit better with the UI than another. Um, we also have written context, uh, context as well as, well as developer notes. Um, here's an example of some comments that were used in this string um, that, uh, you know, for example, if there's the term apple, you might want to differentiate between, hey, apple here is, is referring to the fruit, not the computer. Um, also, I forgot to show you in the visual context tool, if we click this view all map strings, some translators and reviewers like to work from more visual cadence, and you can click in any one of these strings highlighted, and you'll be prompted uh, to the, trans, uh, the translation window to that string as you work through in that cadence. That is, uh, by and large, what I want to show you. We, all, we also have reports um, that can be important, and important for uh, the management team, um, and we also have an additional quality assurance tool. Um, I'm not going to mention integrations, just know that we have multiple different integration options that we'd be happy to go over with you with one of our sales engineers as well. All right, Darren, back to you. Thanks, Miguel. Um, yeah, so again, that was a, a very high level overview of TransFX. Um, there's obviously a lot more to it, uh, but conceptually, uh, we just wanted to provide you with some context for um, how that approach works. But if you have any questions, you can email Miguel at uh, miguel at transfx.com. And you can also email myself at uh, darrenp at transfx.com. D-A-R-E-N-P. But uh, thanks for watching. And again, reach out if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.